Hi, this is John Rocco, and this is the second in the series on how the Hawaii Democratic Party maintains a one-party state here in Hawaii. And this second um, category is physical presence, but of course that covers many things. I got a better pen this time. It can be harassment, intimidation, plus, etc. Um, harassment and intimidation. Just very recently, we've seen how some, uh, just a couple of the women, I think one of them on Civil Beach, he came out um, talking about some of the stuff that Senator Dan Inouye did many years ago. Uh, many of the women that were affected at that time are still afraid of coming out and saying what happened. They're afraid of repercussions. And as myself, I'm a martial artist, so when people uh, do things, um, what I need to do is actually uh, keep in check because I don't want to hurt people. It wouldn't be a good thing. Um, I've been trained very deeply. And so actually, when people come and do things to me, it's more a matter of um, myself uh, not doing anything to them, actually. Um, except for these women, actually, you can see why people would be afraid of the Hawaii Democratic Party with the types of things that they can do. Um, if you're not a martial artist or something, and if you don't have protection, um, people cannot have a firearm here in Hawaii. Um, there's been applications for people that were scared and needed one for whatever situations they were in, and no, no applications ever been approved for having a firearm to protect themselves. And so you can imagine some of these women that were affected by Dan Inouye's situation way back when, um, not able to protect themselves at all and just scared. And that's why um, at the time when, um, when um, I think it was a Democrat Amaral, her name was, um, when she said that she was taking names of women who had also been harassed by him at a certain point, none of them came forward. So I'll talk about this physical presence right now. Um, first, uh, I'll talk about um, in my private practice, my counseling practice, I alluded to this earlier um, in the first video when I talked about hacking. I, I needed to, it was just there. I had a counseling practice and early on, 2010, I already knew that they were sending people to my practice. Um, it was very amusing the first person that they ha had call my practice. Um, someone called and said, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I need some anger management. Um, yeah, what, what do you do? Do you, do you talk about yourself? I mean, it was clear it wasn't someone that needed anger management. Um, so through the years, they had been trying to send people to me. They got very good. And so this physical presence, um, I'll, I'll just say it's hacking. They'll try to do things to your business. And and I closed my practice, counseling practice. I've heard of that happening also um, in the Republican Party for others whose uh, business was harassed, that type of thing. That happened to me. Um, I just switched back to filmmaking, which is worse for them, actually. They're scared of my film right now. It's kind of funny. You get what you deserve, man. Um, so hacking. Um, my private practice... Um, uh, you can um, you can actually Google John Rockwell Counselor and you can uh, read a review on me of someone that refused to give his ID. He's the only person that ever came to my practice and refused to give me an identification, a driver's license, so um, and gave that Google review that um, that mimics a political attack block from 2010. The heading of it, uh, what a joke, or something like that. John Rocco. And so it's, it's, it's pretty clear that, um, and also the same person, um, uh, physical presence. So I'll, I'll say, A, at, the, at my private practice, B, um, this happened also, that same individual, I'll just call him um, Squarehead. <laughs> okay, Squarehead, S-H, Squarehead. The same individual, I, at one point, um, I, uh, I was going to 24 hour fitness pretty often and I started keeping a regular schedule. I was passing by the middle of 24 hour fitness at a regular schedule. He also showed up at 24 hour fitness and he came up right beside me within about that far away from me. He said, what the hell are you doing here? You know, he, he was trying to do things and I talked back at him and then um, after I talked back to him, then he reported me to 24 hour fitness. So it was kind of a defamation type of thing. So that's why I know um, that um, he worked with Hawaii Democratic Party. This person was pretty aggressive. I'll just call him Squarehead. Um, this physical presence, it doesn't just apply to me. Um, it also applies to family members. Um, 
I've had kids go to college, and um, I'll just talk about one incident. Um, for so, uh, family members. Um, someone from my family was approached at a Kaimuki McDonald's, and I'll just call this um, Baldhead. BH. <laughs> so that's Squarehead. Here's Baldhead. Uh, he said a 60 years, 60 years year old, ch old Chinese guy came up and asked him about 20 minutes of political questions and then started to threaten him. M someone in my family um, squeezed him and said, when you don't expect I, I, I struck you here, when you don't expect I struck you there, you know, just a freaky guy. And, and this family member of mine was freaked, you know, um, that bald head did this. And I actually um, recognized this person later when uh, there was a family event and I noticed him there and I recognized him once following me and um, I walked in, I walked up within two arms lengths away from him and he covered his face and he was with someone else and they covered his face. I turned in a description to the police, they don't care. In fact, there's some collusion appears from the police. So this person um, intimidated a family member, he tried to go to a family event and he did some other things I won't quite get into which were pretty thick. So um, one time, um, this is summer 2019, I felt like I was being followed. I pulled into a park just to see what was going to happen, and Baldhead showed up. Um, short, probably 5 to 60s or so year old uh, Chinese guy. He looks like Buddha. Um, so physical presence, you know, imitating family members. Um, let's get into more recent stuff, physical presence. Uh, there was um, summer 2019, I was taking yoga certification class to become a yoga teacher, and there was hecklers. Um, so D, I'll say one, um, hecklers. Um, this all started actually earlier on. It, it led to hecklers, but at first it was, um, let's see, it started out when I had my shoot with Cindy Lauper on Magnum PI. If you want to Google that, you just have to Google um, Cindy Lauper, Magnum PI, and then a Twitter uh, account for CBS will show up, and then you'll see the small clip that I'm in with Cindy Lauper. I'm in about the first 20 seconds, and then she shows up with um, the, the main lead for Magnum PI. So that night, um, I went, I was kind of real feeling really happy. I went to Target. Um, I was shopping for some food or something, and someone walked up to me, and she wasn't a heckler, but she called herself Sheila, and just like Baldhead did with um, my family member, she came up and asked me gods of political questions. I guess they were wondering, how, how do you get a role with, you know, what's going on with this guy? Because I got a role with Cindy Lauper. So what's your acting? She was asking a bunch of questions, political and also about the acting. What's your background in acting? Da, da, da. So they're trying to do this opposite research. And actually, um, that's something that Charles Dejou um, at one point talked about in one of his speeches. He said, be careful who you talk to because, you know, they send people out. Well, she asked me a bunch of questions, and then later on, um, there was another shoot I had. I forget what it was, but it's on a bus going home, and I'll say um, Bubba. Bubba's kind of a big guy. Um, he has a tattoo on his, um, right on his cheek there. He has some Chinese characters or something. A, a really tattooed kind of guy, Bubba. I'll say BB. So that's BH, this is BB. And he showed up and he sat right next to me and tried to be really intimidating and things like that. And I was intimidated, I'll say that. Um, because this is the first time that happened to me. I was the only one on the bus. He sat right next to me and just tried to just, just you know, act freaky. Now this person, Bubba. Okay, uh, let's see. SH is probably a little short of me, 5'5". Five five. Um, this person's probably, oh, maybe uh, 180 pounds. This person is probably uh, five foot. Um, maybe um, 140 pounds. Um, Bubba, uh, Sheila was kind of larger, a larger female. She probably was 5'6", um, maybe uh, 140 pounds. And Bubba was kind of large. Bubba was, um, I'll say he's about my height, 5'7". And he was probably about 220 pounds, kind of a bigger guy. And so he was really intimidating and just doing all this freaky stuff. And 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 he he, he was playing something in his pocket. And and I was freaked out because I didn't know what was going to happen. I, I didn't know if, what this person was going to do. And so I actually didn't go home. I just kind of stayed out and I just kind of contemplated it. Um, I, I saw a friend. I saw a neighbor I spoke to at a 24-hour fitness. I actually went and spoke to uh, someone at ThinkTech, um, someone who was a lawyer. I, I wanted some advice on this type of thing. Because um, I didn't know what was going on. Eventually, I realized that he is just intimidating. 
Um, I didn't know that at the time, and actually I appreciate it now. But because I didn't know what they were going to do, I didn't know if it was going to be violence or what have you, I started to develop my martial arts to a degree that um, it's never reached. Like, like I said before, I was, um, I was cast to uh, swing the mace and kill Bill. And so I always swang stuff. When I was in college, I swung volleyball poles, but not... You know, not, it was kind of like I aspired to use, um, do what uh, Guangdao did. Uh, a Guangdao is a weapon that's named for Guanggong. If you go to a Chinese restaurant, <clears throat> you might see Guanggong with this um, weapon. Guanggong is a famous figure of the romance of the three kingdoms in Chinese history. And that's a Guangdao. <clears throat> and there's a Guangdao that's about 110 pounds, I think it is, in China. And they say, and Guang Gong, they say he's probably about 300 pounds. And they, and some people say he could never have swung that. I always wanted to test that. I thought, you know, maybe he could have. So I would practice swing with volleyball poles. But um, when this started, things happened with Bubba in summer of 2019, what happened is they started sending hecklers to me. These hecklers could come up, up to four times a day, just tackle me. They could heckle me three times in Honolulu. I could go to Kapolei, and they could knock on the bathroom door and heckle me. <laughs> that kind of thing okay so this is a physical presence kind of intimidation type of thing and um i'm actually happy it happened now because i didn't quite know what was going to happen and so i just developed my martial arts to a degree that um that now i can swing 45 pound olympic bars as a weapon and that would never develop had bubba i'd never met bubba or all these people and that comes out in my filmmaking too it just made me a better person you meet your opposition it's kind of similar um what happened with joe lewis um, when he had um, Max, I forget the name of the opponent, but you rise to the occasion. Um, Joe Lewis, he got beat, and then he he beat his opponent later on in, in a very um, meaningful way. Um, this is during World War II, that type of thing, around that time. So um, it, I, I, that came out in me, that um, you, know, you, you feel like you're being beat, and I just rose to the occasion and developed my martial arts to a degree that, oh gosh, I could never imagine. And so I'm, I'm appreciative, actually, of, of all of this physical presence that came at me because it made me develop much more. But anyhow, um, so uh, Guangdao would swing that. People said he could never have found swung that weapon. Well, me at 150 pounds, um, I was able to swing a, about a 47-pound bar, Olympic bar. It's the Olympic bar. Um, and um, I was able to do that out of all this intimidation what, because I didn't know what these people were going to do. Eventually, I figured it out. It was basically intimidation. Um, but eventually, what happened? E. I'll put E out here. A, B, C, D. Hecklers, 2019. Then COVID happened. Uh, the last thing that happened before COVID was that um, I went to a church twice in Honolulu because I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to have violence and stuff happen around me and it was it was pretty bad um, my house was broken into um things were just sharing in my house because because of all this stuff that was happening um, eventually i got divorced um so it was it was pretty bad everything that was happening and um i was going to a church in honolulu i went twice third time i went um three guys including bubba um went on the bus i have a picture of bubba <laughs> went on the bus and um Followed me home, and I told the bus driver, "These guys are harassing me. They they heckle me, and the, you know, I ran for office. You know, I told the background that I told you in the first video, and um, and then one of the guys that was with Bubba said, "Hey, he's he's in, he's harassing us." And then the bus driver said, "Hey, any of you any more talk about harassment? You're off the bus." They went to a conference, and they covered their faces, and then they left the bus. These three guys. Um, one more thing that happened, um, D before I get to hecklers, and also um. They sent uh, a guy to try to get him to fight with me um, in front of my house. This was a tall, I'll call him Pole. <laughs> All these code names, man. Pole. They sent Pole to my house. I'll call him Pole because he's a skinny, tall, Caucasian fella. And he's probably about six, I'll say six two, probably 180. And um, what happened was um, I was taking yoga certification class and I was completely hacked. And so they knew that they knew that I had classes Tuesday, Sunday night. In fact, they sent someone that um, talked to me in the Barnes and Noble and said, so you have classes Tuesday and Thursday. What are you doing Thursday? Something, you know, they do this kind of mind game thing. Well, Paul, um, what happened was I had my last day of class on a Sunday um, that summer. And um, they had these, <laughs> it's funny how they do this. They have these African-Americans follow me on the bus all the way home. 
every bus I went on, there was an African American following me there. And the last bus, the last African American that was following me, he pretended to be a friend of mine from a ping pong club. And I knew he wasn't. And I already knew something was going to happen because they were following me all the way home. Sure enough, um, I arrived about, oh, my bus stop was probably more than 100 yards away from my house. And there I saw Paul. And he was waiting like... Uh, between me and my house by about um, maybe uh, 50 yards. I walked up to my house and he walked to me, oh, are you following me? Are you following me? And he tried to get in a fight with me and I just avoided him, avoided him, avoided him, went to my house. Um, later, two days later, I was taking the garbage out and he, I saw him walking around, so they were hanging out there. Um, Bubba had um, a colleague that worked with him. Okay, I'll say that's BB, that's, I'll call him BB. That's Bubba, and this is BB, and BB is uh, probably five uh, he's about my height, 5'7", except he's kind of heavy. Uh, I'll say 240. And what BB did is uh, at one point, um, at one point I was going to the same bus stop every day and he showed up and they said, good morning. And the, he hung out with Bubba and they would go together and heckle me. So this is physical presence type of thing, all these different people. And BB, um, yeah, and they would send BB walking across the street at my house too, just to see what I would do. So this was this was a an ongoing thing, um, physical presence. Yeah, it, uh, Paul also did that in front of my house. He also tried to get in a fight with me at Walmart. Um, this was um, the winter before COVID, um, and I talked to the you know he he basically walked up. I was looking at movies, and he walked straight up to me with with um, someone else, and um, he was within probably two feet of me, and then. Really quickly, he reached down and grabbed to pull a movie out. They probably were thinking that because he moved so quickly, I would do something and hit him. And they're trying to get me into a fight so that they could say that John Roth was violent or something. So this physical present things is a pretty big deal. Um, so and that was Paul that did that. So I had two interactions with Paul trying to get into a fight with me. And um, there's some more stuff, but I'll just get into the more recent one. The most recent one, okay, so COVID happened and basically pretty much shut everything down. Um, there was also an incident where, um, okay, I'll talk about one more one more before we get to post-COVID. Pre-COVID, um, there was someone, I talked about my counseling practice and how they could send clients to me. As it turns out, probably the most violent person that was sent to me, I saw later, um, following me in the mall and trying to send girls to, young, underage girls to me and one of the underage girls said my name and I knew that he was behind it and I knew that he was he actually posed as a client before he also um would walk in front of my house and so he was posing as a client that was really violent that was in front of my house and then that Halloween there was four dead cats um in my house in front of my house so it's kind of a physical intimidation thing I figured out that he worked for them that he wasn't actually a client um, when he was escorting those underage girls a group of about four underage girls and he was trying to get them to interact with me and so I'll call him um um Big one, B O big one, because this is the, a really large guy. Um, when uh, he was in the counseling session with me, I can't really talk about that, but B O big one, and this guy was probably oh about six, six three, and probably two fifty. Oh, uh, I'll say, I'll say two sixty. Really heavy guy. He he always had the same. Um, he always had the same, it was uh, uh, the same um, wallet carrier, a really huge one, black one. And so it's so easy to recognize him. He always had that. He always wore the same thing, white t-shirt and shorts. And so it's pretty easy to recognize him. When he came into my counseling practice, um, he wasn't dressed like that. But when he followed me, he was. So um, that fellow. Um, now we'll get to um, post-COVID. So post-COVID, um, nothing happened until um, April 1st. Oh, well, post-COVID, um, I, I rented a shared office, and I saw Bubba once, and I went out and took a picture of him, never saw him again. So I knew that they were kind of following me around already. Um, then on April 1st, on April 1st, 2021, um, I was shopping Waikiki. I just went to... Uh, I just went to Macy's in Waikiki. I got a polo shirt. I just purchased a polo sweater, and um, I was stopped at the I was stopped at the street right before crossing the street to go to to Urban Outfitters. So I just walked down the street. Someone walked up 45 degrees to me and punched me in the face, and um, and I I actually was quite amused. Um, 
Something else happened earlier where someone tried to do something that could damage me. They, they know that I had the prior brain injury, so that happened um, within the shared office space. And so I knew something was happening. I knew that they were trying to damage me because I was working on my film, trying to get my film distributed, and it's taking a lot of work, a lot of mental work. And so I already knew they were going to try to damage me. I knew they were going to try to do something. Um, this, so this punch in my face was expected. But um, I looked at them. It was completely amusing, the opponent they said to me. I just laughed hysterically at this person. He got really scared. I took pictures of him, and he went and got a weapon, and I just took pictures and called the police. And so he got arrested. But that was April 1st. So someone punched me in the face. Um, he since uh, it seems like he's been released, that type of thing. I, I tried to get lawyers. Lawyers are scared of going against the White Democratic Party. I'll just say that. Lawyers are pretty afraid. Um, so it's hard, difficult to get a lawyer that will want to go up against the White Democratic Party. So that happened April 1st. Then um, also, um, I there was a place where I was going to, um, on Sunday nights to relax and sit down and go over my phone, that type of thing. And I did that twice. The third time I went... Um, there was someone there that, just like this person, this person that um, punched me in the face, I'll call him Beard, because he had a beard. He probably was, he was a relatively thin guy. Um, beard, BD, he was oh, probably about 6'3", uh, 210. 6'3", 210, I have pictures of him, the police arrested him. Um, and he punched me in the face, and um, I expected it. I expected something around that time. Um, so that was April 1st. Then uh, I was I went to a place a couple times. The third time I went there, there was two guys waiting for me. And I'll call one of them Skin, like because he's really skinny, the skinniest guy they've ever sent. I mean, he's probably about 6'3", 170. Skin was with um, Shorty. Shorty was oh, probably 5'4", um, and probably 140. But Shorty had a four-foot stick in his hand. Shorty was without a shirt, and as soon as he saw me, he started to say stuff and say, like, hmm, I wonder if this guy's going to try to do something to me. And so I walked around the block, and sure enough, he followed me. And then, and then um, he says, you're not scared of me? Because he's carrying a stick. And I, I know from martial art, I'm really trained. Um, if he wanted to, and if he really was trained, um, he could he could kill me with that stick. I know that. And so, um, Shorty, you know, but I'm I'm trained. I'm just kind of okay with people that are very aggressive against me. And also in my practice, I'm used to having people that um, are homicidal. Um, so I'm just kind of used to dealing with those kind of people. Anyhow, he um, he followed me with a stick, and then um, after that, then he kind of disappeared. Uh, I wasn't afraid of him. And then I went uh, to um, shop some more. And then later, the guy that was with him, Skinny, followed me. But I, I, I wanted to stay with him because I wanted to see what was up. I wanted to stay around him. I let him call the police. Um, and then so I made the police report on April 1st. I made the second world police report then. And the third time I saw um, Shorty, um, a block from my practice, I decided to make another police report just to document it, that these guys are doing all that stuff. And so this is physical presence. This is intimidation harassment. Now, I'm a martial artist. Um, I, I could have been in Kill Bill um, using a weapon. Um, I said no to that at that time for various reasons. I won't get into that. This isn't the time for that. But um, I'm pretty, pretty trained as a martial artist. And so I'm okay with all this. I'm actually happy that it happened because it brought me to my martial arts to a level um, that, um, comparatively speaking, ratio-wise, I was swinging like what Gondel would swing. So I'm really happy for everything that happened, actually. It brings you up. It builds you up. But imagine someone that's a woman or someone that's, you know, that's not trained or what have you. You know, all this stuff happening. This physical presence issue is probably a large issue. Why the Hawaii Democratic Party retains power here in Hawaii. So um, that's the second video. Uh, my name is John Rocco. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I, I tried to go very fast. There's some stuff obviously I left out because um, I tried to be very quick for everything. It still took 24 minutes. You guys take care. Have a good one. This is John Rocco. Okay, bye-bye.